So the most common posts in my men's hair and beard community on Facebook is, hey, is this normal? Followed by a photo or a video of something. And since enough people were asking those questions, I thought I would just make a video and address all of the most common ones. Because there's a time for concern and taking action, and then there's worrying about something that is totally normal. So in this video, we're gonna be covering the five completely normal things that you might be freaking out about, but shouldn't be. Let's get into it. Okay, so first off, I totally understand that hair loss is a real concern for men. You know, 50% of men will go bald at some point in their lifetime. And you know, it's in the back of my mind too, but unless you're seeing like real signs of it, it's really easy to get in your head about little things or panic for no reason happens to me too. Oh my God, okay, it's happening. And it usually stems from either not knowing or from just having anxiety about hair loss all the time. Like most things in life, stress isn't good for hair growth. And so ironically, stressing about losing your hair when you're not could actually cause you to lose more hair, which is different from genetic hair loss, by the way. But hopefully in this video, I can put your mind at ease and help you not worry so much about it. And stick around to the end because I will also cover some situations that are a cause for concern and when you should take action. So the first most common question I get is, is this amount of hair fall normal? So whether you notice your hair coming out in the shower from shampooing and conditioning or coming out after you brush, you know, we shed around 100 to 200 hairs per day and it is completely normal. And the reason I bring this up because I see a ton of guys in my Facebook group Maynard Mains posting photos of small amounts of hair fall basically on their brush or in their hand asking if it's normal or if they're going bald or if they should be concerned. And my first reaction is, oh wow, that's a very small amount of hair fall. You have actually really strong and healthy hair. But I totally get it, like if you've never seen hair fall before because you've had short hair all your life and then you grow your hair out and then you start noticing shedding for the first time, you're probably going to freak out a little bit. So I definitely am glad to have a place where people who aren't sure can ask those questions. But I made a video counting how much hair I lose in a day from showering and brushing and it was between 60 and 70 hairs. So this is not cause for concern if you're noticing hair fall as you start growing your hair out longer. And if you wanna watch all the videos I have on shedding versus balding versus breakage, what's normal, what is not normal, I'm gonna leave all those links in the description for you. Moving on to question number two, and that is, should you be worried if you can see your scalp or if your hair looks thinner when your hair is wet? No you shouldn't worry, it's totally normal. When your hair is wet, it's weighed down and it's clumped together. This creates more parting and your scalp will be a lot more visible. So as your hair dries, it's gonna separate, it's gonna detangle and your normal hair density is going to return. So don't worry if you can see more of your scalp when your hair is wet, it's totally normal. I'll pull up a video right here of my hair when it's wet. You can definitely see that it's weighed down. It looks thinner, you can see more of my scalp, but it's totally normal. Okay, so moving on to number three, and that is mistaking a widow's peak for a receding hairline. I had this question from a group member. There was a young man asking about his hairline and if it was receding, but to me, it just looked like a widow's peak, maybe just a mature hairline, which is something that is totally normal that men can have. But a widow's peak is a type of hairline. So you can have a hairline that goes straight across, kind of like this, or you can have a point down the middle and it's angling down. And the easiest way to tell what you have is to just pull your hair back and look at your hairline. So some famous people who have uh, widow's peaks are guys like Chris Hemsworth, Jay Gyllenhaal, Josh Jamel. And when it comes to hairlines from a receding perspective, you know, you're gonna have three options, right? You can either have a juvenile hairline, a mature hairline, or a full on receding hairline. And a juvenile hairline is typically what you see when you're younger, but older men can also keep their juvenile hairlines as they age, right? Ronald Reagan was a man who kept his juvenile hairline all the way through as he matured. A mature hairline is also normal. It just slightly recedes as you age, much, much slower, but it never becomes full receding or full balding. Then you have a full on balding hairline. So it is possible to have a juvenile hairline and a widow's peak. You can have a mature hairline and a widow's peak. The biggest mistake I see a lot of guys make when they're looking at their hairlines is mistaking just a regular widow's peak and a juvenile hairline for a receding hairline. So the easiest way to tell if you actually are receding or not is to look at the Norwood scale. It measures hairline recession from one to seven and a juvenile hairline would be a Norwood one and then a mature hairline would be like a two or a two A 
and a trichologist, so his hair and scalp doctor, would probably diagnose male pattern baldness around a Norwood 3 or later. So if you aren't receding past a 2 or a 2A, there is no cause for concern when it comes to balding, at least not yet. And a widow's peak might give you the illusion that you're receding, especially if you've never noticed it before. But if you really are receding, it's gonna be very obvious around the temples. That's where receding is going to start. And the earlier you take action, the higher chance you'll have to stop it. But that's what you wanna pay attention to is if the temples keep going back. If you just have a typical widow's peak, there's no cause for concern there. Okay, number four is mistaking calyx for vertex balding. And vertex is basically the crown of your head back here and so the scalp becomes a lot more visible. So the crown of your head is also a really common place that men lose hair from male pattern baldness. So when men see their scalp at their crown, it can be really easy to overreact. But, so what I will say here is that if you are receding at the crown, it's probably after you've already started receding at your temples, right? So normally it would be around a Norwood 3 vertex and it's possible but less common that you will actually start receding at the crown before the temples. So seeing a little bit of your scalp at the crown where your calic is, is totally normal, right? I had a few guys post about this in the Facebook group asking, is this normal? And they showed a picture of their calyx and you could see a little bit of their scalp and they were worried about uh, vertex balding. But I also have a calic at the crown of my head and you can actually kind of see my scalp too. And I'll bring up a picture here as well, just so you can get a better look. But as you can see, like my scalp is a little bit visible, but if there aren't any signs of like full on receding or full on balding and you're not receding at the temples, then there's no need to worry really. So concern number five is mistaking shorter, thinner hairs around your temples and your hairline for receding or thinning hair, right? So your hairline is the most common place to have baby hairs. And baby hairs are just small, fine, wispy hairs, typically around your hairline and around your temples. And these are totally normal. They're not a representation of your quote unquote adult hair. And it's also not a sign that your hair density is changing from thick to thin or medium to thin or something like that. So sure, they can be annoying and they can make it tough to style your hair, but you could get rid of them by waxing or shaving at your hairline, but I don't really do that. They just grow back and my advice is to embrace them. I think they're totally normal, part of having hair. So yeah, if you do see thinner hairs, you can kind of see around the temple here, I do have thinner hairs around my temple. It doesn't mean that you're receding. It just means that you have normal baby hairs. So don't worry, that's totally normal as well. So when should you be concerned and when is it time to take action, right? So if you are actually receding past a Norwood 2 or 2A, then you can start to talk to a trichologist about options. If you're also pulling like clumps of hair out, by clumps, I don't mean you brush your hair and you get 20 or 30 hairs. I mean like you're pulling hundreds, thousands of hair out at a time and you start seeing patches around your head. This could be a sign of something medical, maybe even not genetic hair loss. It could be something like telogen effluvium or if your hair density is changing from thick to thin or medium to thin and your scalp is gradually becoming more and more visible than what it used to be, then it could be time to talk to somebody. But something not to do is to panic or get anxiety over things that are totally normal that aren't a cause for concern. So hopefully I was able to ease your minds in this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. How's like hair looking in my mouth like always? <sighs> Ah, yes. Nice. Is I see, <clears throat> so some famous people who have widow's peaks, I just messed the crap out of my hair. <laughs> Panic or get inside.